Hi friends, thank you for taking time out of your day to spend a little with me. I appreciate you. This week I'm taking another viewer suggestion, this time from Gina G04. The case we will be discussing is that of Latanisha Carmichael, who was sadly never given a chance at life. So please join me as we remember Latanisha Carmichael. Latanisha and her twin brother Andre were born in 1976 to Madeline Carmichael. Madeline was a single mother living in Brooklyn, New York. Her husband left after the birth of her two youngest children, leaving her to struggle financially. Prior to having the twins, she had her oldest son, Gregory, and middle child, Sabrina. According to her children, she ran her household with a heavy hand, and their home was not a safe space. She was quick to anger and would take this out on her children. Madeline was described as a strict disciplinarian who often enlisted Gregory as the enforcer, giving him orders to hit his siblings. Her unusual methods of punishment included burning her children and assaulting them with any object within her reach. Madeline forced her children to be prisoners in their 700 square foot apartment. They were not allowed to have friends, leave the house for other than school, or even see family members. Despite Madeline and Gregory having multiple complaints regarding the children, she always seemed to get them back, until she willingly gave them up. Prior to Andre becoming more aware, Madeline claimed she had given La Tanisha away when the child was just three years old. She explained she was too poor to take care of all of her children. Anytime Madeline was questioned, she stated La Tanisha was sent to a foster home down south for a better life. No one in the Carmichael home talked about the forgotten daughter, and she became a distant memory for them all, including Andre, who wasn't aware of her existence. He heard vague references regarding another child, but the only time he questioned his mother about her, Madeline beat him, so he chose to drop the subject out of fear. As previously mentioned, Madeline surrendered her children. In 1988, Sabrina was the first, then Andre six months later. Gregory was already legally an adult by this time. It's unclear what her final reasoning was, but allegedly Madeline thought Andre stole a portion of her rent money and she turned him over to the state. While in foster care, Andre was allowed a visit with his Aunt Justice when he was 12 years old. His aunt made small talk with him to make sure he was doing fine, but then she asked a very odd question. Where's your sister? Andre replied, Sabrina, and she said, not Sabrina, your twin sister. Andre was confused. The only sister he remembered having was Sabrina, but his earliest childhood memories start when he was around six years old. He told his aunt he had no twin sister, and she didn't press further. Andre, however, couldn't let it go. When Andre turned 13, he decided during a visit with his mother that he would ask about his alleged twin. He wasn't met with Fist this time, though, due to the presence of a social worker, but Madeline told him she would explain it to him when he was old enough. Andre knew better than to push on, so he let it be. However, Sabrina privately told him after the visit that he didn't want to know. The idea of this fourth sibling plagued Andre for years, and dreams that he experienced growing up started to feel more like memories. He remembered sharing a crib with another baby, a girl, the same girl he also shared bottles and toys with. It all just started to feel a little too real, so Andre made it his mission to uncover the truth. Was he a twin? And if so, where was she? Andre and Sabrina both spent their early to late teens in foster care, but continued to stay in touch. In 1995, he asked Sabrina the dreaded question, and again, she didn't give him a clear answer, just telling him if she told him the truth, they would have to go to war. By the time Andre turned 22, he was living on his own. He met a woman in his city, and the two married, then went on to have their own daughter a year later. The birth of his daughter, Andrea, made Andre think about his own mother, who he hadn't seen or been in contact with for several years. 
He decided to track her down so they could not only reconnect, but so his mother could also meet her new granddaughter. However, this meeting was the opposite reaction Andre expected from his mother. When Madeline saw Andrea, she recoiled and told him not to bring her around anymore since she resembled someone and it brought back too many bad memories. Andre's aunt went on to explain that Madeline's reaction to Andrea was due to her resemblance to his twin who vanished 20 years ago. After the reunion, Andre had enough and knew he needed answers, so he approached Sabrina one more time for them. In 1999, he threatened to hire an investigator to find his sister, and Sabrina cracked. Prior to explaining what she knew, Sabrina made Andre sign a contract stating he wouldn't repeat the information to anyone else since she feared their lives would be in danger. Sabrina told Andre, quote, There's no use looking for your twin sister because she was murdered, end quote. In November of 1979, Sabrina Carmichael was eight at the time. She was sitting at the kitchen table eating alongside her sister, La Tanisha. Madeline was strict about food and made sure her children ate all of it before leaving the table. La Tanisha, who was only three years old, was forced to eat more than her stomach could hold, and it caused her to become ill. She vomited on the kitchen floor, and according to Sabrina, this sent not only Madeline, but their brother Gregory, who was 17 at the time, into a fit of rage. Madeline was mad at the waste, but Gregory was mad over the prospect of having to clean it up. Madeline snatched La Tanisha out of her chair and hit her relentlessly, with Gregory joining in. Sabrina watched on helplessly as her baby sister was hit over and over again until she looked unconscious. Unknown to Sabrina at the time, La Tanisha passed away from her injuries due to the brutal attack. When Madeline realized La Tanisha wasn't moving or breathing, she attempted CPR on the child to resuscitate her, but to no avail. Instead of reporting the death, Madeline and Gregory decided to hide it by placing the little girl's body into a chest. They wrapped her inside of a newspaper and a blanket before sealing the chest shut and storing the chest in Madeline's closet to be a forgotten family secret. Sabrina told Andre Madeline would always sprinkle baking soda around the closet and light incense to help mask the smell of decay. Anytime she or Andre got close to the closet, they were punished. This was a memory Andre also recalled. Andre remembered the forbidden closet and how adamant their mother had been about staying away from it. In fact, it was often blocked off by a bookcase or a bed. Sabrina told Andre she chose not to speak up out of fear, and even though Madeline was harsh to them, she still had some pleasant memories with her. But after hearing the story, Andre convinced Sabrina that they needed to tell the police. Their sister deserved justice. Upon hearing the story, law enforcement were speechless and opened an investigation seeking the truth. During their search, police discovered medical records for the birth of Andre and La Tanisha in 1976. School records, use of social security number, and a record of a driver's license existed for Andre, but nothing for his twin sister. In fact, after November of 1979, all traces of La Tanisha vanished. Investigators were sure that Sabrina's story checked out, and foul play was suspected. A search warrant was ordered, and police went to the home of Madeline Carmichael on November 6, 1999. By this point in life, Madeline, who was 61 years old, was living alone and in poor health in a different apartment complex in Brooklyn. The neighbors described her as kind but a little eccentric. She lived in the complex for years, and everyone knew of her. For the most part, Madeline kept to herself minus a few complaints to her property manager. She complained for years of a child crying near her apartment despite no children living near her unit. It would keep her up at all hours of the night. She had no criminal records, so when police approached her unit, they were all puzzled. When Madeline answered the door, they started to question her. They explained they were looking for one of her children to which Madeline replied that all of her children were grown and left the house. Then they said, no, we're looking for La Tanisha. Madeline stated, La Tanisha moved out of town and I haven't seen her in 23 years. But investigators weren't buying Madeline's story. 
Armed with a search warrant, they pushed past her into the home. Madeline immediately went to the bedroom and stood in front of the closet, trying to stop them from uncovering the dark truth. Madeline started complaining of chest pains and how she was unable to breathe. She fainted at the scene. While Madeline was transported to the nearby hospital, investigators tore down the barricade in front of the closet door. Once through, they uncovered a chest. Although they knew what waited for them beyond the lid, they could never be prepared for what they discovered. Swaddled inside of a blanket in yellowing newspaper pages dated November 4, 1979, were the remains of three-year-old LaTanisha Carmichael. Inside her makeshift tomb, they discovered air fresheners and mothballs, placed to mask the stench of death. Madeline Carmichael lived in the same apartment as her deceased child for 20 years. She completed daily tasks with La Tanisha just feet away, hidden from the world. La Tanisha's autopsy was performed, but sadly didn't reveal much more than what was already known. The report revealed her death was the result of a homicide. However, the body was too decomposed to determine what her cause of death was. When Madeline arrived at the hospital, police weren't far behind. In her hospital room, she was formally charged with the murder of La Tanisha in one count of tampering with evidence. She was placed under arrest and transported to the jail after being discharged. Gregory Carmichael, who was 38 years old by the time La Tanisha was discovered, was already serving a two to four year sentence at the Cape Vincent Correctional Facility near the Canadian border for robbery so he wasn't hard to find. Gregory was charged with criminal negligent homicide and tampering with evidence. Both Madeline and Gregory entered a plea of not guilty. They both decided to waive their right to a trial by jury. If found guilty, Madeline faced up to 25 years to life and Gregory, seven additional years. A New York Supreme Court justice heard the case with the trial lasting 10 days. Throughout the trial, her lawyers argued that no conclusive medical evidence was provided to show La Tanisha was struck to death and that ultimately her death was an accident. They tried to paint Madeline as a loving caregiver who accidentally killed La Tanisha and out of fear of keeping her family together, she chose not to report it. Sabrina testified against both her mother and brother, recalling the horrific series of events all those years ago. She also described the childhood home and environment, and how they all had to walk on eggshells. A testimony that was also shared by Andre, who expressed similar emotions. The defense attempted to dismiss Sabrina's testimony, stating she was just a child and could have easily misread the situation. But Sabrina stood firm in what she witnessed. Prosecutors, backed by statements from both Andre and Sabrina, framed their position for the victim. They stated at the end of the trial that, quote, justice delayed was not justice denied for La Tanisha Carmichael. But with any verdict, it's always bittersweet, only because it brings into question why we're here. In this case, a little three-year-old was murdered, end quote. On October 23, 2000, Madeline Carmichael was found guilty of second-degree murder and tampering with evidence. Gregory was found guilty of negligent homicide and tampering with evidence. On November 1, 2000, Madeline was sentenced to 16 years to life with the possibility of parole, while Gregory was given an additional two and a half to seven years added to his current sentence. At the time of her arrest, Madeline was very ill due to cancer. She served a small amount of her sentence before dying in prison on August 9, 2002. After the trial, Andre expressed he didn't care what degree of murder his mother was charged with. It only mattered that she was convicted of his sister's death. In his closing thoughts, he stated, quote, The city failed her. I blame my mother, but I also blame the system. End quote. In 2008, Andre and Sabrina published a book titled Family Skeleton, A Brother and Sister's Journey from Murder to Truth. It's a detailed first-hand account of growing up under the heavy hand of their mother and the murder of their youngest sister, La Tanisha, and how she became the family secret. Hi friends, if you made it this far, thank you so much. 
I want to thank Dina G 4 once again for sharing this tragic story with us. I didn't know Latanisha's story prior to this suggestion, and much like other cases we've discussed on this channel, it made me sad. She didn't get a chance at life, but thankfully she had siblings who fought for her right to be remembered, despite being fearful of the consequences. But enough for me and what I think. I want to hear from you all, so leave your thoughts in the comments below and we can chat about this case. If you found this to be informative, please consider giving the video a thumbs up to let YouTube know you want more. And lastly, if you're not subscribed yet, you should because we would love to have you under the ash tree. Thank you all for always showing kindness and support to me. It really means the most. I hope you have an awesome week ahead of you. You are all the best, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Stay safe out there. Bye, friends.